morning, Quack Up 101 here. And today's shout out goes to X Happy 425. X Happy 425 was first to say first in one of my recent videos. And that's what's the shout out. So congratulations. Good morning, Quack Up 101 here. And I have a really neat airplane for you today, folks. This is the Kutai KI 84 Warburg. Okay, also known as the Frank <laughs> or Hayate. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry, folks. But anyways, what is the uh, KI-84? It is a true four-channel airplane, which means we have aileron controls, we have throttle controls, we have rudder control, and elevator control on this aircraft. Additionally, it only weighs 249 grams. It's a big bird, folks, but it only weighs 249 grams. It has a large wingspan of about 690 millimeters. But again, 249 grams. What does that mean? That means this airplane does not require registration in most countries. Okay, you don't have to worry about registration. You don't have to worry about remote ID with this bird. Even though it's a large bird, it's made of foam. That's why they kept it light, folks. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Uh, it's available in this army green. It's also available in white and also in silver. So you have three different choices for um, the colors on it. Again, I mentioned it's constructed of uh, EPP foam, crash-resistant EPP foam, so it should be able to take somewhat of a beating. I would not recommend crashing it into asphalt or concrete, but if you're out flying in a grassy field, this might be able to take a tumble or two. We'll see when we go flying. Uh, I'll probably will tumble it once or twice, so I hope not. <laughs> uh, another special thing about it, it has brushless motor, folks, powerful brushless motor. This is a, uh, what is this, 2204, 2300 kV brushless motor, along with 16 amp electronic speed controller for the airplane. Uh, what does that mean? That's a lot of power, okay, 16 amps of power going to that motor. So this, but you know, it's a bigger bird, it's going to require more power. So it does have the power. Um, the battery on it, let's get the battery. The battery is located in the pilot compartment. It is a 2S battery, a 7.4 volt, uh, 1500 milliamp hour. Let me pull it out of here and show it to you. Yeah. 7.4 volt, 1300 milliamp per hour battery. I don't know if that's showing up or not. Um, size 70, 30, 60. So that means 70 millimeters length, 30 millimeters width. And since it's 2S, maybe I got that wrong. 30, 30, 60. <laughs> Well, anyways, it's a 70, 30, 60 um, battery. I'll put it up here what the wet length, width, and, and uh, thickness is on that based on that number there. That's that's what this number is for, folks, if you don't, if you don't know. Um, it tells you the dimensions of the battery. Again, and I'll show you what that means. I'll put it up here on, on the screen uh, to go with this battery. But again, you get one of those batteries. And I'm going to put it back inside here for the airplane. Additional things on it. Now, that 7.4 volt. 1300 milliamp per hour battery is supposed to give this airplane up to 25 minutes of flight time. That's a lot of flight time, folks. Additionally, the transmitter that comes with it is supposed to give it out to 300 to 500 meters range. What does that mean? That means you could probably go FPV flying with this particular bird, although you're not supposed to fly out of line of sight of the airplane. But this is a large bird, so you should be able to keep it with, uh, you know, you should actually be able to see this out at about 300 meters, this particular bird, because it's big enough to do that. Another thing about it, it has capability for GPS addition, okay? It doesn't have GPS built into it, but you can add GPS. It's got a little bay here, and it also has GPS um, pins or um, GPS hookup uh, points on the flight control board. However, that does require some soldering skills. Um, if you're not into soldering, uh, you might want to skip the idea of incorporating uh, GPS on this particular bird, okay? I'll include a picture of the flight control board here so you can see what I'm talking about here, about how you need to do some soldering to incorporate GPS onto this aircraft. Now, the protocol, the uh, control protocol for this is unknown at this time. I don't know the protocol. I would love to know that protocol so I can use my multi-protocol transmitter to fly it. Because there's, I'll show you why <laughs> when I get into the transmitter here. I talk about the transmitter. Why I love to use my own transmitter with this particular aircraft. But right now, you have to use that particular transmitter unless you have um, your own transmitter that can use an S bus receiver. Now, the flight control board on this uh, particular airplane does have a little port where you can put an S bus receiver on it. So if you want to use your own transmitter right now, the only option you really have to do 
is uh, to incorporate your own receiver, uh, an SBS receiver, on the airplane and hook it up to your uh, transmitter that's capable of using that SBS receiver. Now, let's talk about this transmitter, what I was just mentioned here. Transmitter has 300, 500 meter range. It has dual antennas, okay? Both of these antennas are not fake. There's wires going up in both of these. So, yeah, that's how it, it gets its 500 meter range. <laughs> got dual antennas on it but let's go over the buttons on it it does have low and high rate for switching between the different modes and that what that does is increases the bank angle or the uh, movement of the control surfaces on the aircraft um, if you're going to be doing stunts well if you're flying in beginner's mode and just flying around learning to fly keeping in low but if you want to do stunts you want to probably put it to high now let's talk about this button here which is the modes that i just mentioned there um, it has three modes in the center position is 6G mode. And what does that mean? That means the aircraft has angle restrictions. Let me put this back on so it looks a little better for this particular review here. But it has angle restrictions that prevents the aircraft from banking a certain uh, a predetermined uh, bank angle or also pitch angle. It won't let the aircraft go inverted, in other words. Okay, it keeps the aircraft from going inverted. Additionally, when you're in 6G mode, if you get into trouble, all you need to do is let go of the sticks and the aircraft will automatically level itself um, so that you can prevent it from crashing. Now, it has another mode. It's called 3D mode. When you switch it down here, that turns off the angle restrictions on the aircraft. And it also turns off the auto stabilization um, that automatically levels it unless you press this one button here. Okay, let me talk about that here and go into details again. Again, when you put it in 3D mode, it's more or less manual mode, okay? Um, you're going to have to automatically, you know, take control of the aircraft and keep it from crashing or uh, keep it from rolling over. Uh, with the exception, if you do get into trouble, all you need to do is press this button here quickly and the aircraft will quickly automatically level itself. Additionally, when you're in 3D mode, it'll automatically do uh, auto stunts with left roll on, by pressing this button here. Or if you want to do a right roll, you press this button here. Or if you wish to do a loop, you press this button here. And again, um, you can, but again, you know, in 3D mode, you probably want to do your own stunts. And to do a roll, all you need to do is give it some throttle. And I, I like to pull back on the stick and move it to the right. And that will give you a um, barrel roll. <laughs> okay. And put it diagonally like that. That should give it, put it into a barrel roll. Or if you just want to do an aileron roll, I recommend giving it a little bit up pitch first and then giving a full right and that will give you an aileron roll. And again, obviously, you do a loop. It's simple. You just give it throttle and pull, give it, let it pick up some speed and then pull back on the stick and it should do a loop too. But again, this will automatically do auto loops and I'll, I'll demonstrate that here on uh, the table. I'll show you what, it, I'll take that propeller off and show you how, how that works there. And finally, it does have another mode, which is full manual mode. Now, wait, I forgot to mention, in 3D mode, there is some automatic stabilization for wind gusts, okay? So, say this thing gets hit by some turbulence and it shakes it around, this will automatically try to prevent that from tipping over in wind. So, there is some wind stabilization in 3D mode. Now, you put it to full manual mode, there's none of that. You're in full manual control of this airplane. Uh, there's no stunts. These buttons do not work in manual mode. Those buttons do not work in 6G mode. They only work in 3D mode. But again, in full manual mode, um, you're, it's, you're on your own, folks. <laughs> okay. Um, you're full manual control of the aircraft. No stabilization. Um, no matter, automatic stunts in full manual mode. That's for experts only, folks. So... I'm going to try to demonstrate actually 3D mode when we go flying. And I might put it in for manual mode there for a second. We'll see when we go flying this particular aircraft. So I mentioned these buttons here. There are trim buttons for throttle. You know, um, there's trim buttons for uh, rudder, which is this. And trim button for pitch or, ele or elevator. And trim button for rudder. I'm talking um, quadcopter terminology there when I'm saying pitch. But again, for elevator and for rudder right there is your trim buttons so that's the transmitter comes with it it's powered by four double a batteries high quality uh, batteries from the dollar store the dollar tree so, <laughs> so yeah it's good enough for where we're going flying so got that in there let's go over what you get in the package uh, overall this comes unassembled i'm going to put a quick picture up here showing what comes in the package while you know initially unassembled it's ver not very hard to put together this particular aircraft i'm pleased with that 
Um, it did take me about a half hour or so to put it all together, but uh, it's relatively simple and kind of self-explanatory. And with that, Brian, let's talk about the manual that comes with this. It's both in Chinese and English. Um, again, it's more or less a good manual. It, it's a reasonable manual uh, to uh, tell you uh, how to put this together and how to get it in the air. So it's a reasonable manual. But again, let's go over what you get in the package. You get the airplane. You get the battery. You get one propeller. I wish they'd provide a second propeller. Uh, the good thing is this is not your standard type of airplane propeller. This is a quadcopter propeller. <laughs> We're seeing here um, six-inch quadcopter propeller. You can get these on Amazon and on eBay relatively cheap on Banggood, too. Um, so if you need more, I recommend getting more of these. Uh, but again, six-inch diameter uh, quadcopter propeller. Get, get a few of those. Uh, to go with this and it is counterclockwise spinning so keep that in mind too folks but again you get the airplane you get the the battery you get a charger for the battery you this is the ready to fly it's ready to fly version uh, i think it only comes ready to fly you get the controller in other words to for that ready to fly you get a bunch of screws to put it together and you get a little screwdriver to put it together and let me talk about putting it together real quick um, again, it is entirely screwed together. The only things you need to screw in there is the tail surface um, and plug in the ailerons for onto into the flight control board for the uh, wing servos and then screw in these two screws here and then just uh, push in the uh, landing gear and the tail gear and it and also attach the propeller and it's ready to go. Okay, let me take off this propeller, and then we're going to fire it up and show you uh, these flight control modes real quick. So hold on, folks, while I remove that propeller. Three, two, one. Okay, um, the way I put, <laughs> I'm going to start this up. I'm doing this in reverse than you normally see for uh, hobby-grade propellers. This is still more, or hobby-grade aircraft. This is still more toy-grade aircraft where you plug in the battery first <laughs> and then turn on the transmitter. And then to connect the transmitter to the airplane, you have to go full up and full down, and that activates the motor, and you and now have control of the aircraft. Now let's put this in 6G mode, okay? Automatic stabilization, and give it a little throttle because stabilization only works when your the throttle's on. But let's check our surfaces right and left. Now watch what happens. If I turn to the left, I'll, the control surface automatically activate to try to, to level the aircraft. If I go to the right, again, they automatically activate to try to level the aircraft. Same goes with the tail surfaces, right or left, or up or down. They automatically uh, activate to uh, level the aircraft. Now, when I put it into 3D mode, okay, that doesn't happen anymore. Notice, notice the, if I go to right or left, if I move it real quick, say trying to simulate wind gusts, then yeah, you can see these moving. But if I go slowly, there is no movement of the ailerons to try to level the aircraft. So keep that in mind, folks. And again, in this type of uh, mode, there is no automatic leveling of the aircraft. Let's tr now do a left roll. Press the left roll button. Watch, watch what happens to the ailerons. And the motor. The motor picks up. Ailerons go, making a left roll. It has to complete the left roll before that motor cuts out again. We're going to turn it, do that roll, and there we go. The motor slows down again. Similarly, if I press the right roll button, it'll do the same. Same for the loop. If I press the loop, watch the tail surface. Tail surface goes up, motor picks up, and it wants to do that loop. Say it can't complete that loop, but we got problems, and we're heading for the ground. All I got to do is press this button here, or let's move it up like this. Press this button here, and watch, see how the ailerons level the aircraft automatically. So, again, this, if you're in 3D mode, all you got to do is press that button if you get into trouble. Try to remember that. So, that is the aircraft, more or less, the KI-84. Neat aircraft. I'm excited to try to fly this tomorrow. So, I hope you enjoy this flight. Let's take it out and see what this can do. Good morning, Quackcopter 101 here, and welcome to beautiful Pleasant Ridge Park. Beautiful day to fly for the uh, test flight of the KI-84. Now, this is not my first flight of this bird, folks. I had been out here 10 days ago on a windy day, beautiful day, but very windy day, and flying this in 6G mode 
I had some issues with this particular aircraft. In effect, it would, I'd lose control of it and it would spin into the ground on a windy day. Uh, today, I am going to start off, instead of going in 6G mode, we're going to start off in 3D mode for a while and see how it flies in 3D. And if I feel brave, I'll switch it back to 6G and see if, the, uh, if I have a repeat what happened the other day. I'm debating whether to include that vi video with this or not. If I do, you'll, you'll see it. It'll be included with today's video. So uh, what happened 10, 10 days ago. So let's uh, plug the battery in, connect it to the controller and get it in the air. So hold on, folks. Okay, I'm connected and I am in, make sure I am in 3D mode, 3D mode and got it set to high rates too. So let's take it into the air folks and see how it flies. Whoa, <laughs> okay, there we go. Now, it is flying in 3D mode and I need a little downward trim on that airplane. Let's go to 6G mode here. Because I want to adjust that trim. Let's bring it in, Donnie. Bring it. Oh, see? That's, I'm having the same issue I had before. If you do not give it any throttle, if you reduce the throttle, you lose steering authority on this. But right now we're on the ground, so let me adjust uh, that downward trim, like I said here. Back to 3D mode. Let me give it a little bit downward trim. <laughs> Let's see if that fixes it. Okay, another shot at it. There we go. Trim that. Now, do I have steering authority? Again, we are in 3D mode. It's a gentle flyer in 3D. <laughs> On a day like today, that is. Just trying some uh, figure eights in 3D. Give it a throttle. A loop in 3D. So yeah, you need to trim it out, of course. <laughs> but very little throttle in this airplane. Flying rather well. And I'm getting an M in there. I might give it some throttle to try. A, there we go, a barrel roll. Left, left barrel roll. Turn it around. So yeah, the 6G on this is weird. I don't know, but 3D is okay. Again, remember 3D, you don't have any self-stabilization here. It's going to uh, require some manual flying, of course. But it's actually a nice flyer in 3D. I'm keeping it in the air, folks, because again, I'm in 3D. I'm not the best 3D pilot in the world, but <laughs> I can do it every once in a while. <laughs> So, um, yeah, again, I was flying, I'm going to include that uh, 6G flight with this, showing you that there is issues in, for some reason, with mine, at least, in 6G mode. Um, 3D mode, not so much. Let's bring it around. Another roll, coming down, coming back. So yeah, it's 6G. <laughs> so for beginner pilots, I don't know about this airplane, folks. I would not recommend it for beginners, unfortunately, because of uh, that problem with 6G. They're gonna need 6G mode and this has issues with it. Holy rolls. Cutting the throttle, let's see if I can turn it. 
Yeah, this one turns in low throttle. <laughs> but I don't know what the problem is with 6G, folks. But, oh, it's a nice flyer, actually. I'm having fun with it. I was flying another airplane today, uh, the GD 560. And I had some issues with that, unfortunately. Namely, the doesn't want to turn. <laughs> but this one also didn't want to turn. But putting it into manual mode, these that seems to fix the problem. Or 5D mode. Or what is it? 3D mode. Now, what is 3D mode? Let's go over that again. 3D mode is um, turns off the self stabilization, turns off the angle restrictions. Um, it does have some minor stabilization for wind gusts, but it, it's close to being manual, but with corrections for wind gusts, uh, semi-stabilized there. So if a wind gust hits it and tries to bump it, that the stabilization system will counteract wind gusts. But this is flying nicely. Let's try one of these buttons here. <laughs> trying to find those buttons. Left roll. That was the automatic left roll. Oh, by the way, this self-stabilization system, you can turn it back on again with the press of a button, if you can find that button, and it holds it for six seconds. Like right there. I turn it on for, that's if you get into trouble, but again, you got to fumble for that button. I'm pretty high up. Let me come down. So you can see this bird a little bit closer. Just giving me some altitude here so I can do some stunts, some minor stunts with it. Like that one there. And then coming down. You can barely hear this thing. It's very quiet. Another thing about this airplane, uh, I can't believe how crash worthy it is. Again, I'm going to include my first flight. It was unbelievable how many times I crashed it. I mean, crashed it hard. But it, again, a lot of those weren't my fault. That was the stabilization system would make it um, do hard loops or hard uh, banks. It would just go over full right or full, actually full right for some reason on the ailerons. And it would go into spin and crash because of that. It's coming along nicely. Boom. Nice gentle roll. I'm getting a feel for it now. These are all manual. Oh, I was going to do a roll, but I'm getting a little too far away over there. Whoa. <laughs> I better call my jets there for a second. <laughs> but yeah, this got plenty of power. I'll give it that. Um, let's glide it. Can I? The throttle is off right now. Do I have steering authority? Yeah. I don't have that when I'm in uh, 6G mode. And that is a problem, folks. Turn the throttle back on again. Lower. So, nice flyer in. Well, nice flyer in 3D mode. Real nice flyer in 3D mode. I give you that. So for you intermediate pilots, yeah, consider this. This could be fun. But for beginners, no. Again, because the 6G, at least with mine, is wonky. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. Let's see if I can get some speed up on it. And, oh no. There's one, there we go. 
poor loop. Another loop. And what am I doing there? <laughs> Stalled it. Yeah, I haven't been able to fly, folks, for... <laughs> Well, I had flu 10 days ago, but that was a windy day. But man, the weather's been just uncooperative here in Erie. Lots of overcast, real dark days, windy days. Just couldn't do it. That's why I haven't been around, folks. <laughs> I haven't been publishing. But spring is here finally. So should be able to do some new reviews. I got some new stuff on the way here. Ooh, nice roll. Yeah, I'm keeping it high, like I said, though, folks, because I can't fly, or I want to stay up high on this one until I really am comfortable with this bird. Again, this is the first flight of it. I kind of like it in 3D mode. It is a good bird. Actually, nice bird for flying 3D. I'm enjoying it. It's just hovering up in the air. Let's see if I can hover it. <laughs> it did for a second. Coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down. Zoom. <laughs> Try to find a little invert there. Okay, I think that's our telemetry warning. We're gonna, it's supposed to get 20 minutes, but I don't think I have 20 minutes of flight time, but it's giving me telemetry warning, so we're, we're gonna bring it in now. I don't want to kill out that battery. Now, I don't have a nice field to land it, or a nice flat part to land in, so we're going to land right around here somewhere. Hold on. Ooh. <laughs> but again, this thing is crash-worthy to the max. <laughs> again, uh, you got to see those crashes from the first flight. I'm going to include them after this. I'll include that video after this one here to show you those, what this can take. <laughs> But yeah, for some reason, I had issues. I still am having issues in 6G mode. But in 3D mode, this is a nice flyer, a nice plane. I actually like it. So get a little bit of that uh, grass out of there. And again, um, one thing I want to stress is the importance of flying in a grassy field if you can. It'll minimize the damage to your airplane so you can stay in the air <laughs> and fly it again. So that's the KI-84. Actually, real nice flyer in... 3d mode has some issues in 6g at least mine did i don't know if all of them are like that check out the other reviews on this to see if other people had problems with in 6g mode but i did i just got to put that out there so again hope you enjoyed this flight this is quadcopter 101 signing out good morning quadcopter 101 here and welcome to the test flight of the ki-84 okay it's a beautiful day here at pleasant ridge park nice day to fly I already have it bound to the controller. We're going to start off in 6G mode in low rate. So let's see what it does here. See if I got throttle control. And we do. I already tested the surfaces. We should be good to go. The wind is blowing from that direction there. And away we go. <laughs> Getting it up in the air. Okay. Staying in 6G mode here. Oh, <laughs> Lord, this thing likes to climb. We don't have any throttle at all on it here in 6G mode. So yeah, this could definitely be, gl I'm gliding right now. It is, <laughs> makes a great glider, I gotta say. Okay, trying to turn it, turn it, increasing rate. Come back to me. Turn it, turn it, turn it. Okay, gotta go get it. Okay, I got it out of that tree. Let's see if I can get it back in the air again. Okay, I make sure I'm in the right mode here. 
when you turn off the throttle to glide it, make sure if I'm right here, but uh, I don't know why that didn't turn. Yeah, when I turn off the throttle to glide it, it does not turn very well. <laughs> so keep that in mind. It's gliding right now. I'm showing you it gliding. So giving it a little throttle now, going to higher throttle. And we are in 6G mode. So I'm going over this way now, putting the sun at my back. And the wind is picking up, of course, <laughs> as I want to fly this thing in 6G mode. <laughs> See it bouncing around up there, folks. Let me go for a second to 3G mode. Oh, bye. It's a nice flyer in 3D mode. Cutting back on the throttle. Very nice flyer in 3D mode. 6G mode again. So, yeah. Now back in 6G mode. Going around. Let's bring it down close to us here. Gliding right now. Again, if you put it into a glide, it doesn't it doesn't seem to want to turn. Okay, I'm gliding right now. See? It does not turn in the glide. You gotta give it throttle. How about rudder? Give some rudder authority, but aileron authority seems to go off when you turn off the throttle. Oh yeah, I guess that's right. It's, if there's no throttle, there's no aileron. Okay, left aileron right now. Nope. Whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. Please don't break that propeller. <laughs> so, yeah, if you shut off the throttle, you lose rudder control. Let's see if that's true. Well, the throttle's off right now. I got rudder control. I don't know why that's happening. It went in flight. That don't make sense. That's my blade. Okay, taking off once more here in 6G mode. And taking off. That's it. <laughs> These buttons are so confusing on this thing. Why do they put the 6G in the center position? I don't know. But did I lose the blade that time? Let's see here. Nope. Let me take these things off too, folks. Uh, they ain't doing me any good. I'll tell you right now, those are just for decoration. So, so that's two crack ups already. And we're going to stay in 6G mode for a second here. Second more. But again, why is 6G mode in the center position? That's what I want to know. <laughs> that is not a good idea. It should be either full up or full down so that when you get into a problem, you can switch to it quickly. So let's go over here. Away from people. And try once more. Now that wind is picking up big time, folks. So I'm going to stay over here. There's some people coming over there. <laughs> Let's stay clear. We're going to fly it around here. But yeah, um, it's not the most stable once like right now I did not do that it just went full right rudder and full right turn that's weird and I'm in 6G mode I don't understand that it went full full right on me in 6G and then crashed let me get this up higher we're gonna have to fly this up high because Something's not, oh, did I hurt that motor? I might have hurt the motor that time. Let me see if I can rebind it and fix it. So hold on, folks. Okay, I got it working again. It has like a delayed response. And I don't know what that is from giving it throttle to, to take off. See? Somewhat of a delayed response, but let's send it back into the air again. And 6G mode. I'm just gonna fly 6G mode. Because something's not right. <laughs> Let's find out. 
and I'm going to get it up high. Now I'm trying, turning it. Let's see if that does that again. That's, that was just weird. Full tip stall, I guess, on that. And this is a big airplane. I wouldn't expect it to do that. But we're going to fly the remainder. Oh, there, see? It stalled again. So we're going to stay up high. So I feel, whoa, see? It stalls easily. <laughs> they say it has low stall speed, but I don't know about that. Maybe, maybe I had the, the battery pushed too far forward. I don't know. Because I did push the, the battery all the way forward. But we're just going to fly it around high. Some throttle. Give it some throttle so I can steer. <laughs> okay, let's bring it back down. Low. Oh, it'll bring itself down. <laughs> oh, 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 see, see, see. Oh, that's it. I don't know what's with this this airplane there. That went into a spin, and I couldn't come out of it in 6G mode. <laughs> Uh, I'm not so sure. Something's not right about the modes on this. But that hit pretty hard. I'm hoping I didn't hurt it too bad. But that spin I could not pull out of. It got faster and faster. Again, in 6G mode. Uh, let's see here. That sucked up a lot of dirt that time, folks. Um... I'm going to call it quits right now, take it home and clean it out. <laughs> it needs to be cleaned out. And um, yeah, there's, uh, I'm not too <laughs> happy about what's happening here with this plane here in 6G mode. Um, it, would go, it goes into a stall and then a spin very easily. It's not supposed to do that. This is supposed to be a nice glider. <laughs> It did seem to glide for a while. I'm not sure if there's something wrong with the flight control system, but it's not <laughs> operating properly, in my opinion. Hi, Quadcopter101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.